Hi everybody, this is Lars from CatCamStuff.com. Today we're going to look at what I think is one of the most coolest functions that is inside SolidWorks. If you're working uh, in assemblies and um, bringing in a lot of parts that have different configurations and you're switching around, um, there is a tool called the Configuration Publisher that is really neat. Um, to use that and there's actually not much information out there about how to set it up so I thought a, a cool quick video uh, would be would be helpful so let me show you what I'm talking about here if you go into uh, SolidWorks I have this assembly two parts there's a gear and there's a pin uh, in here and normally if I want to insert this into uh, an assembly um, I can go and say insert components and uh, then I can bring uh, bring this part in like this. Um, however, I would like to have some different configuration of each of these parts, um, but I would also like to be able to have a nice interface that when my, when my designers bring it in, that they don't have to sit here and switch between all kinds of different configurations, but we actually set it up a little bit automatic with a nice drop down. That's where the configuration publisher comes in. So let me show you uh, how it works. So it works with the different configurations of your parts. Uh, so let's set that up first. Now, if we go in and we look at the pin uh, here first, the easiest way to use configurations is just to go into SolidWorks and uh, create a new configuration. Now this one is called uh, default. Uh, every SolidWorks part has a default configuration. You can of course uh, rename it. So we could call this one a uh, small pin and I recommend that you always give your configuration something that makes sense. Now if I want to make a copy of that I can actually just highlight it and do control C control V and like Windows and I would get a, a, a different configuration. Now inside the configuration here I might rename this one big pin just to keep things in order. Um, but as you will see that right now they're the same because I really haven't changed anything. Now there's two things we do with configurations normally. It's either changing um, uh, dimensions like we're going to do in this one or it is changing um, or suppressing features. So um, I am going to change the size of this pin. So the big pin, I'm just going to double click on the part and I get my dimension up here. Um, I'm going to make that one a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it 375. And then when you have multiple configuration, you get this little option over here where you can choose this dimension to affect all your configuration, specific configuration, or just this one. And since I have the big pin specified as my configuration, I now have done that. And big pin will be fatter than the small pin. So rebuild it here once, and you will now see that we that we have that. So I did one of the parts. Now the gear, um, the gear. Uh, we can do the same thing for for that. Um, of course, it's a little bit more complicated, and you might um, you might want to to use another type of configurations, and that's design tables, because that's actually what's going to drive the configuration publisher in our assembly. Uh, so we might as well introduce it here. Now, design tables give you a lot more power. You can start. You're actually using Excel, so. Uh, a good idea though when, when we start working with a little bit more compli complicated parts is to um, actually name your dimensions. You can do that. So if I just roll back on this gear just so you can get an idea about where how it looks like. So it's just this, this profile. And if I go in um, and edit the sketch, you will see here that there's a couple of uh, different, uh, different dimensions in here. Um, now the ones that that we are going to control in 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 these two configurations or design tables is the overall uh, diameter and then the hole size. So what you can actually do if you're not familiar with this is if you double click and you get the little measuring um, the measuring box up like this one here, you can actually type in um, a dimension name in here if you've never seen that those are normally called d1 d2 so in this case here i've given this a outer diameter we could also rename it here to od if we want that and the same thing goes for the inside diameter here that we could name that one uh, id or inside diameter or whatever uh, flies or whatever you you prefer um, so that's one thing that i want to do then i have these uh this teeth uh cut out here through and then I'm actually uh, 
just patterning that circular patterning that around. Now most people will probably, when you change your circular pattern, will just go ahead and edit the feature and change it in here. Um, but my thought is that when we make this diameter bigger, I might want some more teeth on here. Uh, so if you didn't know, you can actually also change that instance almost like a dimension. So if you double click um, anywhere on a pattern, you will actually get the dimensions that drives it. And here you will see the 10 what in this case is the instance. So I can actually double click on that and that gives me an option to rename that too. So the number of teeth, I can write that in here. So what happens in my design table is when I create it, I go in and say insert tables and design tables that, and I normally use the auto uh, create here, um, that it will pull in all the the different dimensions that we can use. And we can select them all, that's gonna make a big design table, or we might just <laughs> pick the ones we just created. So OD, right, that was the ID, and then we also gonna have the number of teeth for our pattern in here. So I just hold down control, select those three, hit okay, and now you will see that we have Excel right inside SolidWorks if you have never seen a design table before. And I actually have that default configuration, and then I have my OD, my ID, and my number of teeth. Now some of the things that is nice about this is that we can actually just create our different configurations right in here. So I'm gonna call one big gear, and I'm gonna call one small gear. So I'm kinda of like keeping it in the same pattern that, um, that you saw before. Now I could also rename the default configuration small gear if I wanted to do that too, or I could leave it, whatever. Uh, whatever you want to do. It's nice somehow to leave it because it just kind of like makes it easier to see the number. So the big gear here, I decided this was going to be one inch and my pin diameter is going to change to the 0.73 I put in. And I'm going to change my number of teeth to 15. Now the small gear is going to be the same as the top one. So it's going to be 67. So I'm not really changing anything with that here. Now when you click outside here is when you exit out of the um, the Excel spreadsheet, and now you'll like actually see that I have a small gear, it's not gonna change anything, and a big gear. So now we suddenly have a bigger hole, um, and then we have a, a more teeth than we have on the other one. So those two options using just standard configurations or using design tables, in this case here we kinda like got the same out of them except that the, maybe the design table can give you a little bit more power than that. But I just wanted to show it before we jump into the assembly level. Because when we go into the assembly, we will now see that, well, I still got the small one. And assembly has just one configuration. But inside of assembly, we can actually call up those configurations as soon as there's more. So now we can actually go in and say big gear and click on that. Um, that also means we can click on the pin and say big pin. And we can now suddenly change these configurations. And that was really what I want when we get into uh, this scenario where when I insert it in here, um, then I actually um, want to be able to place it in here. But, and, and at this point, I'm actually at the point where I could start changing my part here. Um, but this will take a lot for my designers and engineers to go in and change these things to do this. And I don't want to do that. We're going to automate it. So, that's when the configuration publisher comes in. So let's see if we can do this in less than 12 minutes. So inside my assembly here, um, I now have um, my, my little assembly. Um, so I'm actually gonna create a, a design table in here and then control the configurations for that design table. So I'm gonna go insert tables and design tables. And again, I'm gonna just select the auto create and uh, then it's gonna open up here. Now here comes the kind of like the magic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create two configurations in here. I'm just gonna call it, a, there's a big one <laughs> and there's a small one, just for keeping things simple. Now it's important with design tables that nobody messes with A2, that gotta be left alone. But uh, B2 is when we can start putting in our controlling our different configurations. So I'm gonna make two columns here, one column for one part and one column for the other part. 
So let's start with the gear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do dollar sign configuration like that. Okay. Then I'm going to call the part add and my part is gear. And then the instance, because we're going to have multiple instances inside the assembly. So this is pretty cool because you could actually have multiple of these gears and you can actually control multiple of them. But for right now, we just have uh, instant one. Okay. So we have that. Now, when I click here, you will see that it kind of like puts it uh, vertical here. I'm going to click on the next one and that's going to be dollar sign configuration. Add, and that was the pin and again these instant one so I kind of like set those two columns up now all I have to do is I have to specify which configurations I want on the big on the small one so that's pretty easy so for the gear because I named them uh, something easy for the gear it's gonna be big gear and for the small one it's gonna be the small configurations for the gear and the pin, the same thing. So big pin for the big one and small pin for the small one. Now I've just created a design table in here for these two configurations. And this is great, now we can test it. So if we click on the big one, you'll see that it gets big and it actually also grabs a big pin and a small one. So now we just created a design table for an assembly that is controlling through the design table those uh, big gears. So we're almost there. The last thing I need is my uh, configuration um, publisher. And that one, you right click up on the top of your assembly configuration. And you say that you want to do the configuration publisher. Now, the configuration publisher. Uh, Again, depending on how much you're bringing in here, the more you get in here. But I mean, you can build on this, right? Um, this is a pretty simple um, uh, example here. So I can pull the two lists in here. But notice that it the two lists are talking about what the configuration does. Okay? So I can actually give them a name um, in, in name in here uh, so I can say um, this is the big gear and but oh, this is the gear I forgot to say that. this is the gear config see how many times I can change my mind and this is the pin config. All right. So now when I've done this, I apply it and close it. It's actually pulling from that design table and I get this property manager here. Now check this out. Now when we go into our assembly and we choose to bring in that new component, bring it in, you will now see that when I place it, I get populated with my configure component. This is what Toolbox uses. And if you set it to configure name, I can choose between small, and it will say that this is the gear config and this is the pin config. And I can choose the big one. Okay. I actually have the default, so you're taking that one out. But you can see now how when my operators goes to insert a new component into an assembly that now when they go in and they pull in that assembly that I have specified, they will now be triggered to choose which configuration do they want to use in here. And they don't have to go through and do all these different switching things around. I think that the configuration uh, publisher is a really neat tool. If you are doing this on a regular basis, bringing in these library components, um, the configure component is really cool. You can do a lot with it. I hope you find that this video here um, gave you a little uh, taste of, of what you can do with the configure publisher. And also, if you've never seen the design tables, um, that, that those are also a very neat uh, possibility to use inside SOLIDWORKS. I hope you find this helpful. I hope you have a great day. And uh, please, if you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate emailing me, Lars at catcamstuff.com. Thank you so much.